So it's a mushroom uh, wonderland at the moment. Check this one out here. Look at that. It's a nice one, isn't it? Okay, so um, this is the video a few people have been uh, asking for. Um, the Tutoran Scrambler and what we think. The first thing we're going to start off with is the weight because it seems to be an obsession with people. Don't know why. Again, marketing. But um, let's check this out. So bear in mind, this has got metal mud guards put on i've got cages on um, we've gone for this thud buster uh, saddle for a bit of plushness and mine i've gone for the dynamo hub and the um, sync usb charger which i'm excited to use at some point so with all those extra things added let's see what it comes in at Okay, that's about 14.8 uh, kilograms. So, um, in contrast, let's uh, have a look at Rachel's, which is here. Now, hers is set up pretty much the same. It's got the metal mud guards on, but it doesn't have the dynamo um, wheel and it doesn't have the charger so that should make it a bit lighter and that's it's pretty much the same actually we're talking points of difference now bear in mind like i say that this has got the the thud buster saddles, we've got the metal mud guards, so that's going to add a bit. Now, if you are concerned about weight, one thing that you can do, carbon seat post, carbon bars, carbon forks, and carbon wheels. And I know if you was to change those, you'd probably save about 2K. So I'm imagining that you could get the weight down on this bike to about 11, 12, 12 kilograms um, with those changes. You know, changing the forks, you're gonna save, I, I think about a kilogram just in the forks if you went with carbon forks. Um, and yeah, you'll definitely make some considerable saving with that rotating mass as well. It'll feel different if you put on some, um, some carbon wheels. But to be honest, We've been riding this bike around these hills and we live in Calderdale and there's a couple of real, well, a couple, near enough every road is a steep hill. And um, my commute to work is a, a 20 percenter at times. And we're just finding that they're just gliding really nicely um, up these hills and especially with the gearing. Um, with an evenly spaced gears of a gearbox it just makes riding up hills an actual uh, breeze and you know we don't dread it at all it's uh, it's quite a quite a pleasant thing to do is cruise up hills with the, with these gearboxes tire clearance the uh, in 650b mode they can take uh, 57 this is going off the tutran website and in 700c you can have uh, 50 mil tires on mine i've got the terravail um what they call cannon Cannonball and these are 47 millimeters wide 
I put these on afterwards. On Rachel, she's got the WTB ones that uh, came with the uh, Tutoran, and they, they, I believe, are 40, 45 or something along those lines. Um, but if you get a close-up of the rear section there and of the forks, you can see there is ample clearance in there for, for tyres. Um, we've set these up tubeless and that was an absolute doddle to do. We're going to look at the geometry of these bikes now and um, I'm uh, 5 foot 7, 171 centimetres high. My partner's uh, 5 foot 4 I believe. Oh, no 6 foot? No, 5 foot 4, 5 foot 3, 5 foot 5. She's gone, tell us. Five. Five foot five, and we've gone for the medium, medium frames, and they fit both of us nicely. Um, so let's talk a bit about the geometry. So I've just made some notes. So just excuse me because I'm going to compare these to a couple of bikes that I've had previously. So if we're looking at the head tube angle, the head tube angle on this is uh, seventy one. On the bare claw Thunderhawk that I had, that was sixty nine point five. So that was quite a bit slacker than this. Uh, on something like a traditional uh, Tourer, you look, if you're looking at the South uh, Marrakesh, you've got a head tube angle of about 70. So, you know, this is, isn't in a, a super slack uh, geometry for, you know, blasting those th down those downhills. It's not touching on, on the mountain bike geometry that you will see some bike packing bikes have. Um, we've got long chain stays here. So on this bike, they uh, 455. Something like the uh, Bearclaw Thunderhawk that I rode, it had a, f a chain stay of uh, 430. Uh, now, this long chain stay, you know, I'm a fan. Uh, the Marrakesh, the Salsa Marrakesh, has a long chain stay. It gives it a nice long wheelbase. So, the wheelbase on this is uh, 1063 millimeters. And um, the wheelbase on the Bearclaw Thunderhawk was 1,023 uh, millimetres. So, you, you know, you about four, four centimetres difference there. But them bikes are for completely different uses in my eyes. This bike, we can put front and rear panniers on this. We're not going to get heels hitting the panniers. We're not going to get toe overlap even with the, the mud guards. It's just going to be nice and stable. It means that when we're going uphill, with these long chain stays. It's just gonna be stable when we're going downhill. It's gonna be nice and stable. And it's just gonna, for our use, it's gonna provide a really good ride. It's not gonna be the short, snappy racer type ride that some of you might be, might be craving and might be after. Um, just generally stable and nice to ride off-road. We've been coming up these bridleway tracks up here. I'm gonna do some more uh, footage of this uh, when we get uh, get out there um, but I just wanted to you know talk talk through that that it is it's it's a nice stable ride and um, I will have no no problems loading this up with bags with luggage and um, it'll be able to handle any any baggage we can we can throw at this this is um, I'm really excited about these I'm really excited about going on a tour with these you know, this is why I went for the Charger, because we're going to be on these bikes for a long time. So another thing about the uh, geometry is the reach. Now, Tutoran say that they've gone for a long reach on, on this bike, so you, you have a, a shorter stem. Now, I found that um, I ordered mine as with the um, gravel bars, and they made, made the reach even longer. And f for us, that we want to do some upright touring, look around. Um, it was too far forward. The the sort of like hoods were were probably about out there, that sort of distance. And um, it was quite aggressive. They were really flared out bars as well. So that added to the reach because they were flared out. And to tell you the truth, I just didn't like the look of them on this kind of bike. Um, it's, they look a gorgeous traditional bike and I um, I wanted to have that traditional bar. So we've um, swapped them out for these 
uh, surly truck stop bars I think they are and as you can see we've not only um, shortened the reach but we've actually hired managed to hire them which gives me some flexibility in here because that's a 30 mil rise these are 10 mil spaces so I've just got loads of flexibility there with how high or low I want the bars and these have really um, transformed the ride for me um, for our kind of riding our kind of touring um, they're just so comfortable now it's, it's um, a really nice a really nice ride okay so now I want to talk to you about how to Turan implement the um, the belt tensioning on their bikes so they have what they have this system down here which they have on all of their uh, pinion bikes and this is um, what they call their cradle and it's absolutely brilliant I love it because it does two things it's really easy to to put tension on your belt when you're putting on a new belt or just adjusting the tension you just slacken off these nuts here tighten that down until you've got the tension where you want it and then just nip these up in the order that you meant to do that one that one and the, the two middle ones so um, really really nice system to tension but also what it does is it makes these rear dropouts nice and clean and nice and strong so the alternatives of this is to have um, with a pinion gearbox is sliding dropouts if you've got a roll off you can have the eccentric uh, bottom bracket um, but if you just look here it's so tidy it means that this back end is really strong so you'll know if you've got sliding dropouts you also need the uh, nuts to actually stop the wheel moving under tension we've eliminated all that with this system and if I just turn the bike round and show you the other side it also means that with the two Turan, we've got this lovely uh, flat mount uh, brake here, which again neatens it all up. Now I'm not saying you know flat mount is the future. Obviously, mountain bikes are still using uh, the IS and post mounts, but um, you can see there that it just it just neatens it all up. Through axles, uh, front and rear, and um, also on this side we've got the um, side stand attachment point there and we've got side stands for these because we will be putting them on when we go touring because we just love being practical so if you look at uh, two trans promotional videos of um, the bikes you'll notice that they have the um, i believe it is the 32 tooth at the front and when you buy them they come with the 39 now this 39 cog is plenty good enough for the hills around here um, we've been riding them around with this cog on and the gear range is, is really sweet you can get up get up any hill and um, it's got plenty of power on the downhills but I did buy these um, at a similar time as to buying the bikes because of the way we travel we load up our bikes heavy and um, I want to have the easiest gears possible I'm not too fussed about the power downhills um, but um, I really want the bikes to be the easiest they can when they're loaded up so I've gone for these cogs you can see that this morning and I'll put on some um, footage of changing them as well because it was a, a really easy thing to do so you can see on Rachel's we've got the smaller one on so that required the uh, buying of a, a smaller belt as well and on mine I've got the original one that came came on the bike so this one has um, a belt size of 118T and when I went to the smaller cog I changed it to a, a 115T now that was really easy for me to work out because the chainstay length is exactly the same as what's on my Outback and uh, the cogs are exactly the same as what's on my Outback so it was just a case of seeing what belt size my Outback had and just ordering that as well but if you need to work out your belt sizes and your ratios and cogs all you need to do is go into the Gates website and there's a calculator on there you put on your chainstay length put on the um, cog sizes and it tells you what size belts would work with the desired ratios that you want um, 
So that's a modification we've done. And when we're out, we're gonna get on a hill and I'm gonna do ride both bikes in first gear. And you, hopefully you might just be able to see a difference in cadence. Um, just coming up the road there, uh, me and Rachel were riding side by side in first in first gear, or I was in first gear and was trying to keep the cadence the same. And I think Rachel was in about third gear. So just by making that change, I know this isn't scientific. If you want your science stuff, go on to um, the Cycling About website with Ailey. He does all. He loves doing all that stuff. Um, but it appeared, rough scientific experiment. It appeared that it gave me. Uh, gave Rachel, should I say, uh, a couple of easier gears at the top end. But bear in mind, then it means you lose that at the bottom end because they're evenly spaced. So it's just basically move that range uh, up by two gears or down by two gears, whichever way you want to look at it. So um, that's a change. And hopefully when we're, we're out there, you, you might be able to see a difference. But I'm going to make, I'm going to change mine when we get back. Because like I say, we've got these bikes for, for loaded touring and we just want to make that as, that as easy as possible. But this cog was perfect for, for around here without bags. So don't think that you have to make, make this swap at all. Okay, so with the geometry comes a nice big triangle here so that you could have those frame bags that are um, bolted through instead of using the, the straps. So that's... Um, a nice feature um, also we have the three mounts at the front and one on the inside so that means that you can use the uh, tube tubers front rack that turn um, bolts through on both sides and it has that bar that goes around the wheel they're a favorite with with travel and um, the rear we've got this uh, lug here which I've used for the rack uh, that which was used for the rack and I've used it for the mudguard. I found that when I was trying to use a rack and a mudguard, it was quite difficult to use that same um, lug there because they just kept on interfering with each other. So I don't know how I would get around around that. Um, I think if you know, if I was being picky, a, a couple of a couple of extra uh, lugs on there to help with loading up the back would would be nice but I'm sure I'll find um, a workaround for that. Um, but yeah, they're, they're the um, luggage op options. Um, there is the mounts underneath there for the third water bottle mount as well. A good thing about the two Turan is this steering stop here. So first of all, it stops the bars coming round and whacking, because you can see if they was to come spin round, that handlebar there would whack straight onto my, onto my frame and uh, do some damage. So the good thing is that we have this stop here, but also if we do use the um, si side stands, we can lock, lock the handlebar in just by doing that and then that can't move, the bike can't roll away. Um, a lovely feature on these bikes for us that like to do loaded touring. What we're gonna do now is now it's stopped raining, we are gonna um, come out of the woods and I'm gonna talk through how these uh, sink shifters work and also just do you some um, rider footage so you can see how it um, looks on the on the rough stuff. I've got the original uh, front cog on. I'm in first gear at the moment. You can see I'm going through grass off road. It's really stable, really nice. And look, I can change gear under pressure, going uphill. Now I'm going to go easier. Easier again. Easier some more. Now with this system, with this sink system, you can 
change gear, full pressure going harder, but when you're going easier, you do have to let off a little bit. So if you just have a close up of the, these gears, the brakes are absolutely amazing. They are so sharp, really nice to feel. Now, with a twist shift, you can twist through quite as many gears as you want, but with the, um, the sink shifters, it's I think three at a time, but you can still go from first to 12 without moving your bike. So now I'm in first, because I've got it set up, so I'm harder on this side, and now I'm in 12. So you can go through all your gears really, really nicely, even while braking if you wish, um, and whatever gear you're in, it's perfect. And um, you know, just an example of when that comes in useful, we were blasting down the hill there, so we're in quite high, high gear, we had a style to climb over, and then on the other side we want to be in easy gear. So it was just a case of being stationary on the bike, put it in first, I'm in first already, put it in first and uh, riding off, and uh, it just, just works a treat. So that is um, what first gear looks like on this bike with a standard cog on. I'm just going to get on Rachel's bike and getting first gear on that now just bear in mind that it might look a bit silly because her, her seat is a lot lower oh sorry i forgot you're six foot five aren't you sorry her seat is massively higher than mine so so one thing that i love about the the pinion system is that when you are riding we're getting a bit of rattle on here because of the mud guards that are fitted but when you are riding on the road they are just completely silent so i'm in first gear now this is what first gear looks like on this type of gradient the easiest gearing you can have so now i'm in third Fourth and fifth. And up out the saddle. Let's give it some beasts. And I'll blast down to you, I think. <laughs> so I'm in twelve. We're going to go, see I'm in 12th now and oh dear I'm in the wrong gear. Just to move it all the way down to first, first and I'm off again. How beautiful is that? Now one thing that you could do is if you really like the twist shifters you could get some Soma bars which our, um, they do a model that's capable of putting on mountain bike sized stuff so you could have a twist shifter for that so as I was saying before I got out of breath while I was still talking uh, one thing you could do is if you wanted to use different shifters because I know if you were going into the wilderness and stuff you, it's ideally um, better to split up your braking from your shifting so there's a few options there um, first option you could Soma do a bar that you can fit on twist shifters um, with. They well, they fit on mountain bike sized clamps. So you could go for that, have the twist shifter, and then just have some normal brake levers, either hydraulic or cable. If I was doing that, I would go for cable if I was going off somewhere where we're not gonna come across some bike shops. And you could have, you know, the TRP cable operated discs or the Paul Paul Clampy component ones that look really really nice um, or another alternative is um, Co-Motion do a twist shifter 
forward drop bars and again then you could have some normal brake levers and those again you could have them hydraulic or cable but if you were going off somewhere remote you'd want the cable ones probably um, but yeah there's there's loads of alternatives to the shifting now um, with pinion gearboxes so you know don't let that put you off because there's, there's just lots of alternatives out there sync they do trigger shifters for those people that really want trigger shifters with their roll offs and their pinion gearboxes so the fact that you are limited or people think that you are limited to a twist shifter doesn't exist anymore there are lots of shifting options you've got these sync brifters sync do the trigger shifters co-motion do a twist shifter and um, you've got different size bars that you can put that on surly have actually done a, a funny shape bar which you can put mountain bike components on so you could even you know get this rigged up with those bars and even have mountain bike brake levers on um, and a twist shifter on the stubby so there's so many options now there should be nothing that that can put you off a gearbox in my mind And um, I found out where my mudguard rattle was coming from. It was coming from this um, metal bit here touching, touching the brake caliper. So I just bent that out a bit and it seems to have stopped it on all the stuff that I've been doing today. So I hope I've um, demonstrated. I didn't want to give the um, give you the idea that this bike, because it was you know long chain stays, a bit more uh, reserved in the front, that you can't have fun on this bike. So I've been blasting on all these uh, single tracks here. And what I meant by it being stable is that uh, that single track footage that you were getting from the bike, I was filming that one-handed <laughs> whilst. Uh, navigating that single track and you know it was just really composed so that's what i was trying to get across mainly um, but uh, what i meant also is that when this bike is loaded up oh, falling down these bricks here <laughs> when this bike is loaded up it is um it's going to still perform really really nicely it's got it's gonna it's gonna feel good like say you're not gonna have that toe overlap you're not gonna be kicking the backs of panniers and stuff like that. Uh, the gearing, you know I was talking about going up that massive hill that gets me to work. Well, I've just had to do that today to get here and this gearing is fine. To tell you the truth, it's a 2K hill with some 20% uh, sections and um, I, I was in second. So I'm only gonna be putting that smaller cog on if we're gonna do some really heavy, heavy touring. Um, so that gearing that comes with a bike, it's perfect for any sort of riding light bike packing perfect and um, like i said i'll only be putting that small cog in if if we're doing front and rear panniers and taking all those luxuries with us um so yep yeah, i hope i've given a, a good impression of of the bike and if you have any questions then uh, please contact me you know this bike they've the off-road drop bar bikes they seem to go in two sort of um, ways. You've got the ones that are going more towards 
the, the mountain bike and ones that are going more towards a road bike and I'd say that this it's a, it's a bit of an in-betweeny really and um, it's really really good on the roads as well um, I was blasting back with my partner yesterday on the drops on the road getting the knee out round corners and I was having loads of fun on the road on it as well so yeah just a really nice bike that's really good at lots of different things um, like I say if you've got any questions then please please uh, send us a comment and I'll try my best to answer them I didn't want you to think from what I was saying back there that this bike can't you know do the technical stuff and even with if you was to have those keep those gravel bars on you would be able to you know slay some single track as well but for our use we wanted it to just be a bit more relaxed so that's what we've set up but by no means has this made this bike a relaxed bike it can it can handle whatever you want to want it to handle so you know we're just a bit of technical riding up here down the other side we've got a bit of single track a bit bumpy with some rocks and you can see that it's handled fine really really nice getting them drops So yeah, this bike can be anything you want it to be. Want it to be a nice steady tourer, sat upright, it'll do that. Want it to blast down some single track, it'll do that as well. And you'll do it in comfort. So I've just had a quick review of the footage and uh, on the off-road bit you might be able to hear a bit of rattling around. Trust me, these bikes are silent. That is just these metal mud guards that I've put on. That maybe I just need to put a few bushes between. Um, but these bikes are solid. They are silent, they are lovely, they are super smooth. All you hear with these is the hum of the tyres. Absolutely gorgeous. So hopefully from that footage you can see that I've blasted on single track, I've blasted gravel tracks and I've just, I haven't got any footage of this but I've just blasted back home from my friend's house on the road and I absolutely love the bike. I absolutely love it. But please don't, you know, buy a bike just off what I say what other YouTubers say about bikes, you've got to make up your own decision. For me, this bike fits everything that I want. It can ride on the road quick, it can ride off-road, it can have luggage, it's long, so I can put on traditional luggage as well as bikepacking luggage. So it ticks lots and lots of boxes for me. Then boxes might not get ticked for you. So you've, you've got to make up your own decision here. You know, if you watch, um, city slickers and the meaning of life what's that one thing well it's different to everyone so you know make, make your decision but from my footage um, hopefully you can see what i do on that bike and i really really love it